Good day everyone, me and my groupmates will be discussing module 4.1, Rainfall Runoff Processes. An important question in hydrology is how much stream flow occurs in a river in response to a given amount of rainfall. To answer these questions, we need to know where water goes when it rains, how long does the water reside in a watershed, and what pathway does the water take to the stream channel. These are the questions addressed in the study of rainfall runoff processes or more generally known as surface water input runoff processes. Let's talk about the physical processes involved in runoff generation. Precipitation can be in the form of rain or snow. Precipitation that are intercepted by vegetation are called trufall. When precipitation hits the ground, it has two options. It can either infiltrate the soil or continue across the land as runoff. Infiltration occurs when the surface water enters the soil. When the soils become saturated, we get overflow in the form of runoff, which is when the surface water flows over land. This surface water can accumulate in depression storages or flow towards the stream. Runoff refers to the movement of water towards the stream. It has two types. Of surface runoff, which refers to the movement of water across the soil surface, and subsurface runoff, are also called as interflow, refers to the relatively rapid movement of water below the soil surface, typically between 7 to 2 hours of when water infiltrates the surface. Infiltrated water can also percolate through the deeper soil into the groundwater. This water is called groundwater recharge. The flow of water from the groundwater towards the stream is called base flow, and unlike the subsurface runoff, base flow moves at, a, at much lower velocities and reaches the stream over longer periods of time, such as weeks, months, or even years. Good day everyone, I am Alexandra Mimunas and I will be discussing the figure 2. As you can see, there are two types of flow, the laminar and turbulent. When we say laminar flow, the individual particles will follow well-defined paths that do not cross or intersect one another when the velocity of movement is sufficient flow. Turbulent flows happen when the separate particles or group of particles follow irregular paths that keep on crossing and recrossing one another to form an intricate, intricate pattern of interlacing lines. So, figure 2 depicts a cross-section through a hill slope that exposes in more detail the pathways infiltrated water may follow. Infiltrated water may flow through the matrix of the soil in the intergranular pores and small structural voids. Macro pores include pipes that are open passageways in the soil caused by decaying roots and burrowing animals. The permeability of the soil matrix may differ between soil horizons and this may lead to the build-up of a saturated wedge above a soil horizon interface. Water in the saturated wedges may flow laterally through the soil matrix or enter macropores and be carried rapidly to the stream as a subsurface storm flow in the form of interflow. We give you the five highlighted kisses figure. First is the precipitation, usually measured and estimated. Next is the flow from pipe outlet, which is rarely measured. Third is the transpiration, usually estimated. Fourth is the vertical domain, usually unknown or poorly known and poorly characterized. So these vertical do domains are called groundwater, zone of percolation, and soil profile. Lastly is the hill slope. This hill slope flow paths, which is extremely difficult to map. For our figure 3, we have threshold hill slope response relationship between runoff ratio and soil moisture content. When we say runoff ratio, it is the fraction of precipitation that appears as runoff or the proportion of rainfall that does not infiltrate and is not taken up by evapotranspiration. Runoff ratio is controlled to some extent by natural factors such as soil moisture content. Soils containing large fractions of clay or steel absorb less water than sandy soils which therefore produce higher runoff ratios and can result in volume and frequency of plants increased in nearby areas. 
It needs to exceed a threshold as rainfall infiltrates into the soil layer and brings the storage to field capacity before significant runoff occurs. As such, surface runoff can occur over short period if the intensity of the storm exceeds the maximum infiltration rate of the soil surface. For our bottom line, as soil moisture content increases, the runoff ratio decreases. So figure 4 shows the relationship between runoff and groundwater depth at two hill slope locations, 14 meters and 103 meters from the stream. It only indicates that runoff is more closely related to groundwater depth near a stream than it is higher up hill slope. So mapapansin natin dito sa figure 4, to the 14 meter from stream, is alam naman natin na kapag ang flow is papunta na sa stream, is mas mabilis na yung flow. So, kung mas mabilis yung flow, mas kaunti yung may infiltrate na water to the ground. While kapag naman mas mabagal yung flow or yung runoff, is mas marami yung may infiltrate na tubig to the ground. Infiltration follows preferential pathways. As you can see in the first figure, it is the photograph of a soil where dye has been used to trace infiltration pathways in experiments. Dye tracing is a method of tracking and tracing various flows using dye as a flow tracer when added to a liquid. It may be used to analyze the flow of various liquids or transport of the objects within the liquid. Dye tracer experiments provide qualitative features to illustrate the flow pathways in soil and to characterize the spatial patterns of infiltrating water. Combined to the laboratory and in situ irrigation experiments, they provide better understanding of hydrodynamics aspect of flow processes in soil. The second figure shows the dye intensity which is objectively classified from the first figure following excavation of the plot. It was done through a dike sprinkling experiment. The sprinkling experiment is used to calculate the velocity and celerity which are then utilized to calculate flow pathways. Moving on, uh, listed below are the five classification of runoff generation mechanisms. Identifying the principal runoff generation process is a fundamental challenge when designating areas of high runoff in a watershed. With that being said, uh, among these classifications, the following are the two prevailing theories describing mechanisms of runoff generation. First is the infiltration excess or commonly known as the Horton Overland Flow. It was said to be the first mechanism of runoff to be discovered and was thought to be the main mechanism of all runoff for quite some time. It occurs when water enters a soil system faster than it can be absorbed or moved, such as when precipitation exceeds the soil infiltration capacity. And also, this was a very important process in areas of the country where significant soil crusting occurs during rain events and more generally during storms with very high rainfall intensities. On the flip side, here's the saturation excess overland flow, which been identified as the main runoff mechanism behind the VSA hydrology. The theory assumes that runoff is generated by the direct precipitation on or exfiltration from saturated areas in the landscape, and that once soil is and that once soil in these areas becomes saturated to the surface, all additional rain that falls, regardless of its intensity, becomes overland flow. Finally, uh, in a simplest term, saturated excess overland flow is what you get when you have a prolonged rainfall that brings the water table up to the land surface and when it's saturated all the way up to the land surface, then the only place for the water to go is over the land downslope and eventually to the stream. Surface detention is the amount of water stored on the hillside in the process of flowing downslope. The transition from depression storage to surface detention and overland flow is not sharp. It is because before some others, some depression may feel and contribute to the overflow. In figure 7, it illustrates the response in terms of runoff from a hillside plot due to rainfall rate 
exceeding infiltration capacity with a feeling of depression storage and increase in and draining of water, water surface detention during a storm. It is also shown in the figure 7 that infiltration capacity um, declines during the storm. It is because due to the pores being filled uh, with water reducing the capillary forces drawing water into pores. In figure 7, the shaded areas under the rainfall graph uh, represent precipitation failing at a rate exceeding the infiltration rate. The dark gray areas uh, represent rainfall that enters depression storage, which is filled before the runoff occurs. The light gray shading represents rainfall that becomes water flow. Geometric consideration dictate that near stream saturated zone will be most extensive in location with a concave hill soil propass and a wide flat valleys. However, the saturated overflow um, is not restricted to near stream areas. Um, saturated uh, from below can also occur um, if uh, where subsurface flow lines converge in slow concavities and water arrives faster than it can be trans uh, transmitted down slope as subsurface flow. At concave slope breaks uh, where the hydraulic region inducing subsurface flow from up slope is greater than that inducing down slope transmission. And uh, where the soil layers conducting subsurface flow are locally thin, uh, where the hydraulic conductivity uh, decreases abruptly or gradually uh, with the depth and percolating water accumulation uh, that above the low conductivity layers to uh, form patch so, uh, perch zone of saturation that reach the surface. What we have here is the contour interval that shows the topography elevation. The expansion of saturated areas is shown in this figure. The solid black shows the saturated area in the beginning of the rain and the lightly shaded area shows the saturated area after the storm. We can see here that the water table is close to ground surface or flat topography. As soon as precipitation occurs such that in the form of rain, runoff generation mechanism occurs. It was explained in Figure 6 that saturation excess overland flow may happen. This is when it already exceeds infiltration capacity. There's no space for any further water to infiltrate it. For this reason, the water table had risen to the ground surface. Para mas madaling maintindihan, meron po tayong figure sa right side. Makikita natin ang ground level, water table, at saturated zone. Once na may surface water input, all the water from the ground will be absorbed by these water channels or capillary pores. So once po na hindi na kayang i-absorb or i-infiltrate, magkakaroon po ng overflow. And when that happens, as shown in the figure, after storm, the saturated area already expanded in the uh, elevated ground surface. For the same concept, next slide, figure 9 shows saturated area between a uh, different season. The darkest shade shows the saturated area during summer. Then the lighter one shows the saturated area during autumn. Then the lightest shows the saturated area after snow melt period. And that's all. Thank you.